Well, hello, Shug here. I'm up in Grand Marais. It takes a while to drive up, about four hours, 20 minutes today. I'd stop at the ranger station, pick up my permit for the BWCA, watch the little film, get quizzed. Had a real nice talk with Ranger Sarah about this, that, wildlife, and the other. I'm here at Joe's place. He's loaning me his canoe this year. I'm so excited now that I'm up here. Now I just gotta get the canoe, get it strapped on, get about 50 miles up the Gunflint to Tuscarora Lodge, get my bunk for the night, get up and have some uh, French toast in the morning, and then hit the water. Joe left this cool note in the canoe. It was so sweet, man. Woo, buddy! My name and breakfast time. Beautiful. Yeah, just like I remember it. And it smells so good up here in the North Woods. It's just sweet smell and I don't smell the fire. It just smells like, uh, it, you know, it smells like Christmas trees. Had a lovely breakfast. Canoe is loaded. Anyway, heading off into round. Here we go. Woo, buddy. And it feels good to be out here already. It's the time of the year we see the lady slipper. And that is uh, the state flower of Minnesota. I'm into Snipe Lake and I'm happy because I love this lake. Got the old Superior Gear Starlight Hammock and fluffing up on the back. Got my partial Franken quilt that I made. Got my Hammock Gear 30 degree top quilt. My Hammock Gear down pillow. Black Bishop bag. Won't be using that. This is the site I stayed at the last night, last year on Snipe Lake. I was going to go to some of the other sites on Snipe Lake and just uh, sort of get camp today and get set. Anyway, those sites were taken, and so I came down to the way I portaged out last year, but I'm going to go back the way I came today and head down toward Hubbub Lake and Howl Lake. I always like this name, Hubbub and Howl. One is a swamp, make my way over to Tuscarora tomorrow, which I didn't do last year, and then kind of uh sort of head a little bit west southwest uh because there's a fire ban right now there's a there's been a wildfire burning on spice lake which is in this area so west of here not too far they closed a lot of it you can't have campfires open fires any kind of fire only canister stoves it's been dry we just haven't had a lot of wet but it's mighty green but after this winter uh there's a lot of dead stuff down and the forest service says you know it's just a tinder box waiting to go up and it already did hey you know one nice thing about this camp Got a nice breeze coming through it. And uh, I remember last year, I'll sort of get the sunset if there's a good one, but it's keeping the bugs out of here. It's keeping most of the mosquitoes away. I didn't sleep great in the bunkhouse last night. 
I was just too excited. You know, I kept waking up going, oh, it's 220. Oh, it's 340. Oh, it's 442. So finally got up about 530. Did a little reboot and kind of getting ready. Uh, they opened the dining hall at 645 for coffee and bring the French toast, sausage, and fruit out at 7. Yeah, it's a great breakfast. I just love sitting there getting excited thinking, man, just a few things to go and I'm in the water. Yeah. Back here doing my Doniker CSI, and I'm looking into the dark, deep hole with spider webs, and I don't see a lot of toilet paper or anything, so it kind of gives me the impression that maybe this camp hasn't been used much this year. And for me, it's a good way to kill an hour. I think this is the same beaver from last year, because I had a beaver experience here. Kind of cutting them up and eating them with a fork, but really good, like a backwoods Philly cheesesteak. Mm. It's just that I saw these steakums in the, you know, <clears throat> the frozen meat department, and I was going, I didn't even know they still made those things, so I just grabbed them and said, I'm gonna have those, but they kind of fall apart once they thaw out. Kind of almost like a pressed meat pulp slurry thing. Mmm, appetizing, right? But I have a teeny tiny little wisp of bar. It's a little uh, Cadbury thing. It's kind of like an arrow bar, kind of like a flake, at least to me. A little different. And this was uh, compliments of Alex. Thank you, Alex, mate. Appreciate it. Whisper. You're supposed to whisper when you're in the boundary waters. Don't yell. They like quiet time out here. I scare myself when I whisper. It's just a shell. Let's see where the bug came out of it. That's weird. Thermocell on. 5.30. Morning Mosquito Brigade. That's hard to say this early. Morning Mosquito Brigade. Morning Mosquito Brigade. Yes. Boy, that little bitter, dusky metalliodoro going over my teeth and my lips and my tongue and going down into my gullet that first sip and it scalded me because it's hot. It's a wonderful thing. Well, my loose plan today is to um, paddle back to the portage over to Hubbub and Howl Lake portage. Which caught my eye the first time I looked at the map last year. I said, Howl and Hubbub. And uh, they don't have campsites on them. And one of them is apparently a swamp and not really a lake. So I'm going to go look at that. And that will bring me to Tuscarora Lake. Which 
it did not do last year it didn't go that way I'm just looping around down here for days my next lake I'm gonna go into is called Copper Lake then Hubbub and Howl and Tuscarora Oh, glory. This one's soaking up all the bacon grease. My Betty Crocker pancake. I think I'm going to have two of them. With my bacon. And my syrup. Maple syrup. You know, a pancake and some bacon in the Boundary Waters, that's what dreams are made of. This portage over to Hub Umber Howl actually has a little bridge. You do get down to a little swamp down here, but there is a there's a paddle path and there is a still a footpath that's pretty wet. I'm going foot first. Uh oh, we got a little situation. I was walking along and this thwart gave away the yoke. And I noticed Joe had it kind of rigged up with some of this line. Those bolts are still down there, so I'm going to get a bunch of paracord I have, wrap it around these bolts, and see if I can repair this thing enough to get through the day. Oh my! Yeah, I think I'm back in action. I lashed the heck out of that thing. Went around the bolts, came here around the pads, went underneath three times, went ahead and lashed around this one. It felt good and tight. We'll see if it works. Woo, buddy! And I got the canoe hat on. Ooh. Heading over now to uh, Hubbub. Going from Kappa to Hubbub. Hubbub. What a lot of Hubbub. Whew. Warm out. Warm and humid out today. But the yoke is holding. I think when I get to camp, I'm going to re-rig it. Not have the line going under the canoe. But we'll see what happens. I've been real happy with these uh, Catula gators I got, and I bought them last year after my trip because uh, I was using my little backpacking gators, and I, every time I would get in and out of the canoe, I'd get a million rocks and sticks, and these you can, they got a little thing you can tighten them up really nice. And so I've been kind of cinching them, cinching them real nice and tight, and uh, I've not had anything in my boot. Catula. Same people make those ice spikes. So I'm happy about that. It worked. Man, it's 86 degrees. Woo. Buddy. Well, la, 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 finally made it to Tuscarora. My first kind of big lake. Woo, kind of pumped. I beat. Those portages were tough. I, I still got to go back and get the canoe and walk it again, but uh, I'll leave this here and off I go.
Well, I went to one site. It was way down where I came in near the portage. And, uh, eh, you know, hammocky, I, I could have made it work. I may be going back there. I'm having no luck uh, finding sites out here. And it's super windy. So I'm kind of getting to the west end of the lake now. I'm gonna tell you what, it is so windy, but I, I want to wake up right here and I'm just thinking the wind will die. I'm not even gonna try to put a tarp up. Man, I had to put my food bag, I got my tarp in there, I got clothes, I got my ditch kit, uh, just, just to hold this thing down in the wind, man. I uh, sure you're obscuring our view. W would you mind moving your hammock? Got my water station going over here, got my old, Treasured ULA Mega Pro. And uh, I have a filter on it. I'm using my little Vratzebene table. Oh, summer sausage. Tastes fantastic. I'm hungry. I had a Lara bar and a goo, or whatever you call those things a goo or a stinger, kind of a little pack with. So like a chocolate espresso honey thing gives you a little boost. You're doing those portages. One was uh, 250, 65, 65 seemed really short, but I had a lot of in and out of the canoe. I'm gonna whack some cheese, have some more summer sausage. You be you, you be you. So here's one thing I did differently this year after last year. I got this little waterproof pelican case and what I liked about it, I found one that just has one clip, open it up, my camera's in there, I can keep some batteries in there and I'm just keeping it right at the, right at my foot in the canoe. But the big deal was just one clip. Some of them have clips on the sides. Got a little beaner on it so I can secure it because I doused my camera last year. The Pelican 1060 micro case series. Made in Torrance, California. Well, that little pelican case is working really good for me. It's just easy to have right at my feet. Flip the lid, pick it up. You can't get cocky out here. Last year, I was going out fishing in that North Star Magic canoe. Tipped it over, had my camera just in the pocket of my uh, PFD. Which is a life jacket. Which is that thing right there. Personal flotation device. I had that up in there and... Gosh, my phone, and they all got wet because I got a little cocky. So, you know, even today in the wind, you're going, hey, man, you know, I was skirting across those things going, you could, you could get dumped, and all your stuff is gone. Your whole little uh, backwoods movie is kaput. No good. So that's that was a big plus. I wrote that down last year after the trip, and I made that dream come true. Well, there's the Doniker. Let me do a little CSI, see what's going on in there. That has been used. I'm kind of just exploring all the little paths back here, see where they go. cheese sandwiches with some green peppers and onions and tomato bisque soup. I had that meal last year. I loved it so much out in the woods. I am replicating it. I uh, got out my old Ronco food dehydrator. Dehydrated the Campbell's tomato bisque soup. Rehydrated it. Those look good on brioche buns. Those are so good. One of Meg's favorites. I toted out some Pepperidge Farm chessman cookies. Shortbread. I have them wrapped in cardboard and wax paper. 
And they are not very broken. Not yet, a couple. That's pretty good. And I believe I will eat a couple of them. Still light out. But it's about 8.45. The wind is dying down. So I'm going to sleep early. Early! I, I want to get up uh, crack of dawn. Maybe 4.30. When I first wake up, and then I always go back to sleep, so... Get up, have a quick breakfast, no pancakes, no bacon. Get to this portage, which is just down there. Get over to Owl Lake and start making my day. And, uh, can maybe kind of beat this wind. It's supposed to be windy tomorrow. It's supposed to be windy every day. It may be rain toward the weekends. And still wind. So, good night, everybody. Oye sumi nasai. Kali nikta. Bitnik Storen. My view. Right here from the hammock. Watching that last sun hit those rocks over there. Four forty five. Okay. I'll get up. And that wind blew all night too, I tell you what, just sort of stopped, so I figured, uh, what did I figure? I figured I'd have coffee, that's what I figured, and, uh, maybe try to get on the water at, uh, at a decent hour. I wasn't even on the water long, but the sun is intense. So nice with the cool portage. Shade bugs. Alrighty. So that was a good 70 yard portage, or portage. Uh, that was nice. I think that was one of the easier ones. I had to re-rig my, uh, my yoke lashing. I didn't like that it was going up under the canoe and I wasn't sure that was even doing anything. And it makes a weird noise when it's quiet and I think the drag was slowing me down. But it was coming loose on this side and starting to dangle, so now I've just really wrapped and went ahead and did this side because this wood's a little rotten. Pulled it tight, uh, not going around the bottom. So, 
see how that works.